Well, it's Sunday morning and I got a little bit of time to crank out a video here before we head off to church. And I've been thinking about my history in model railroading. I'm kind of an anomaly, I think, in the field of model railroading in that I'm not locked into one particular scale. I love Z scale. In fact, since the early 1990s, I've built and sold dozens of Z scale layouts. Here's my latest layout. It's a Knock Moran briefcase layout, and I've added a lot of extra details to it, including a tunnel and a working turntable, and I guess that's a subject for another video. So I've always loved Z-scale trains because there's, you can pack so much into a little space. But then again, I also like N-scale. And again, it's a smaller scale, and you can pack a lot into a small space, but the advantage of N-scale is you have a lot of uh, operating accessories, and you have trains that can be digitized. And, um, well, I've actually sold uh, probably a couple dozen uh, N-scale layouts that I've, uh, I've made, and so I really like uh, N-scale a lot. But there's some other scales that I like, too. For example, as a child, I always wanted uh, a uh, S-scale uh, train. I love the fact that they were on two rails, and uh, I've actually bought and sold a number of S-scale train layouts. And as you can see, this is a box of one of the rarest all-aboard sets. It's called the Westerner. Yet, I have a four-year-old, and he likes O-scale trains, so I have a little bit of a setup here with O-scale trains. It's uh, One's a Mark's lo locomotive here, and a Lionel locomotive. And so, I've actually built and sold layouts in uh, also HO scale, um, had a G scale, and so, I just, I guess I'm just not locked into any scale. There's only one scale that I haven't really built a layout in, and that's TT scale, and I've never been really into TT scale because, uh, just some of the, um, just, just never really grabbed my interest. That was until about a year ago when I noticed that Hornby came out with a new line of TT scale um, trains and especially something that really caught my interest, which was the A4 engines. And so I picked up a couple of these and, um, decided, well, maybe I'll make a temporary uh, layout for them. And so what I did was, um, on the Hornby website, you can print out the layout background or underlay that you see here before you. And I had it printed out on, um, as you can see right here, um, let me see if I can get this over here a little bit. Yeah, I had this printed out on a like a banner and so it's kind of a vinyl, so it's easy to pick up and roll down. I also use some uh, uh, Tillig uh, roadbed track that I was able to put on there and uh, add it in a, uh, a turntable. And this is just a temporary layout. In fact, this background, obviously this doesn't seem a whole lot like the English countryside. It's actually the a, a S scale background that I had used with an all aboard layout and I just haven't taken it down. And so this is just a temporary layout. You see I haven't populated it with a whole lot, but it gives me an opportunity to run the trains. And one of the reasons why I really got into uh, Hornby is um, they're making some really nice uh, models. And these trains, believe it or not, they're digitized with sound. You can run them from your front, from your phone, and the app is free, so you don't have to buy a whole uh, digital uh, makeup there to uh, run your trains. So I'm going to show you here in just a little bit how these trains operate on this, again, a temporary, inexpensive, easy to build layout. Well, here's my TT layout, and now here's my digital control unit, which is my old Samsung phone. And as you can see, here's the Hornby um, <clears throat> controls for it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the Falcon. That's that blue engine right there. And let's see. Let's go to page uh, three. Sorry, I'm not too great at being a photographer here. And let's do automated functioning. Now you can hear the engine warming up. Now, let's get that engine running. So let's increase the speed. Get it up to 30. Well, there we go. Yeah. yeah, these Hornby engines, they uh, the digital ones, really run smoothly. They run really well at a slow speed. Now let's go to the Mallard. So now all we'll do is we'll just flip it to the Mallard there, I think. Yeah, just again, so easy to, uh, to run. We'll go to page three, get continuous running, automated functioning. Now you can hear that Mallard warming up. And let's get that blue one running. Set the acceleration and deceleration for slow speeding starting and slow stopping speed. So this is really neat. The uh, locomotives, uh, particularly the digital locomotives, you can buy them just regular um, DC if you want. And then that's what I did and I actually got some decoders uh, separately and then worked them in. And um, yeah, pretty easy to do. Not really that expensive, particularly for everything you can get with the locomotives. And, um, and then, of course, the digital app is free. Um, this layout, again, as I mentioned before, is free. Uh, the Tillig track, I actually got that from Germany. Raynaud's up in uh, Illinois also sells Tillig. So it's really nice track. Um, I actually like it better than the Hornby track. So, um, yeah, so here's the layout, and um, yeah, thanks for watching this video, and uh, just have a really blessed day. Thank you.